what it talents, what it talents, what it do. Amen. 
Come on, it can't end like this. Let's come to James chapter 1. Be encouraged, amen. The fact that you're still here and breathing, no, it's not going to end like this. You got the last say over this situation. James chapter 1, verse 2. Reading in the New Living Translation, it says, Dear brothers and sisters, when trouble of any kind comes your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will perfect and complete needing nothing. Needing nothing. Let your endurance grow. Yes, it looks like a horrible situation, but know when it looks like you're failing, when it looks like it's hopeless, when it looks like you've lost, know that this is a time that your faith has the opportunity to grow endurance. It is a time of great joy because you're being set up for promotion. You're being set up for needing absolutely nothing. So what is endurance? Endurance is the ability or strength to continue or last, especially despite fatigue, stress, or other adverse conditions and stamina. It's the ability and strength to continue, especially when you're tired, especially when you're stressed. When you're fatigued, it is the ability to continue when you feel like throwing in the towel and hanging your head and quitting. It is the ability to continue when everything looks hopeless and lost. Endurance, praise God. And God is calling us to run our race with endurance. Amen. So know this, according to James Endurance is only proven when there is something in your way. When there is stress, when there is tragedy, when there is hopelessness, when there is loss, that's when endurance is proven. See, there's going to be ad adversities. There will be obstacles in our life. Things that are going to come that's going to look like it's the end, but I want you to know God is saying it can't end like this. Run your race with endurance. Do not cast away your fearless confidence because it carries a great recompensation of reward. Amen? Amen? So how do you do that? How in the world, when I'm tired, when I feel like I have nothing left, no mental strength to go any further, when I feel like I'm going through, when I'm struggling mentally and emotionally, when I feel like I just cannot, how do I do that? We do it by keeping our eyes on Jesus. He is our example, example before us of endurance so that we don't quit, so that we have endurance. Look to Jesus. Look to our Savior. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Jesus is our example, and he shows us what endurance looks like. And he said, greater works than he did, we shall do. And greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And you got to remind yourself, if God before you is more than the whole world against you, and as Jesus is, what? So are we in this world. So turn with me to Hebrews 12. And let's see how God tells us, encourages us to get our endurance. And I'm going to verse 1 through 3, but I'm going to start at the second half of verse 1 in the New Living Translation where it says, and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. Verse 2, how do we do this? We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people. Then you won't become weary and give up. See, we have to be forever mindful that of the good news, that love rescued us to maintain a heart of gratitude and joy to give us strength. Don't ever forget love rescued us. While we were yet sinners, he loved us and died for us. 
He didn't love us because we came into his kingdom. He loved us while we were yet sinners. Before the foundation of the world, we were the focus of his love. It was his decision. Just like Jane says, this doesn't mean that you won't face discouragements and disappointment, but it will be the strength you need to keep you from quitting, especially in the face of disaster, hopelessness, and failure. Remember, love rescued us. Just keep recalling that our Savior, our Jesus, came to us in our struggle came to us in our weakness and loved us and he took on so much pain that we will never experience let's look at that pain sometimes you just need to read it and be reminded of it come to Isaiah 53 and we're going in the message version of verse 1 through 12 because you need to be reminded of the price that was paid. This is Resurrection Sunday, but every day for a believer is resurrection. Every day we live with that power on the inside. Don't you realize when he got up from the grave, we got up with him and were seated in him in heavenly, author- in heavenly places with all dominion, authority, power, and rulership? But you got to believe it. You hear it, but do you believe it? So just look at the pain that he endured. Verse 1, who believes what we've heard and seen? Who would have thought God's saving power would look like this? Referring to Jesus, the servant grew up before God, a scrawny seedling, a scrubby plant in a parched field. There was nothing attractive about him, nothing to cause us to take a a second look. He was looked down on, passed over, a man who suffered, who knew pain firsthand. One look at him and people turned away. What are they referring to? When Jesus was so mutilated, when he was on that cross, the scriptures tell you that he was unrecognizable. See, in the passion of the Christ, we could still see who the man was. But you could he was disfigured when it happened 2,000 years ago. The people were horrified to look at him upon the cross. So they looked and turned away. We looked down on him, thought he was scum. But the fact is, it was our pain he carried, our disfigurements, all the things wrong with us. We thought he brought it on himself, that God was punishing him for his own failures. But it was our sins that did that to him, that ripped and tore and crushed him, our sins. He took the punishment that made us whole. Through his bruises, we get healed. We're all like sheep who've wandered off and gotten lost. We've all done our own thing and gone our own way. And God has piled all of our sins, everything we've done wrong on him, on our Jesus. He was beaten. He was tortured, but he didn't say a word. Like a lamb taken to be slaughtered and like a sheep being sheared, he took it all in silence. Just mis- justice miscarried and he was let off. And did anyone really know what was happening? He died without a thought for his own welfare, beaten bloody for the sins of my people. They buried him with the wicked, threw him in a grave with a rich man, even though he never heard a soul or said one word that wasn't true. Still, it was God, it was what God had in mind all along to crush him with pain. The plan was that he give himself as an offering for sin so that he see life come from it. Life, life and more life. And God's plan will deeply prosper through him. Out of that terrible travail of his soul, he'll see that it's worth it and be glad he did it. Through what he experienced, my righteous one, my servant, will make many righteous ones as he himself carries the burdens of their sins. Therefore, therefore, I'll reward him extravagantly, the best of everything, the highest of honors. Because he looked death in the face and didn't flinch, Because he embraced the company of the lowest. He took on his own shoulders the sin of many. He took up the cause of all black sheep. He loved us when we were yet sinners. Jesus endured the cross. 
He endured coming here and people totally rejecting him. He endured being betrayed. He endured being mistreated and hated and spit upon. He endured being beaten and whipped until his flesh was ripped off of his body. He endured the shame of it all. How did he do it? For the joy that was set before him. The joy of us once becoming his coming into his king, kingdom. So we must allow the joy to be set before us when opposition, hardships, and trouble come. We need to focus on the joy of what Jesus did for us because he lives, I live. And he rose up to give us a good life, abundant life. He rose up to give us a good plan. And you need to remember the good plan. You need to know in your opposition and in your hardship, don't lose sight of Jesus and the promises he's made you and the good plan that he has prepared for your life. You know, when I went through my issue back in 2007 in that car accident, you know, it was a time that as I went to the doctors, one doctor said they couldn't operate or do anything because they didn't feel that they had the ability or skill. The next doctor I went to said, well, we can't do nothing with this. The best we can do is let you heal injured and then give you a knee replacement. And the third doctor I went to was a shock trauma specialist, which meant he put people back together after they've been and airplane crashes and terrible automobile wrecks and all kinds of stuff that shattered their bones. And he said to me, he says, the best I think I can do for you is that I can get you so that you'll be able to walk on a cane and you'll be able to wear flat shoes, but you'll never wear high heels and you'll always have a cane that you'll walk with. And I said to myself, it can't end like this. No, it can't end like this. No, God called me to preach the gospel. God didn't call me to preach it with a standing up here with a cane. Now, I don't have nothing against somebody with a cane, but I just know the God that called me expected me to have on my high heel. The God that called me expects me to be able to strut across this stage without the help of a cane or a walker. The God that called me didn't expect me to have arthritis, and that was another thing they told me. I probably would have severe arthritis and would have to have a knee replacement. This happened in 2007. 15 years later, I never had arthritis. I haven't had a knee replacement. And surely to God, I'm still walking in my high heel. And when I put on flats, it's because I feel like it, not because I have to. But how did I do that? God put a promise in me. He showed me my victory. He showed me walking and talking and preaching the victory. I had to go. The accident happened in April. I had to go from May into May to the end of December taking physical therapy three times a week. Every other week, they wouldn't tell me which day of the three days. They would lay me on a table. Four men would get around me, hold me down while the physical therapy went to bend my knee to break up scar tissue. It felt like it was breaking my bones in half. They took four men to hold me down because of the the excruciation pain and I had to do this every other week not knowing what week it was going to be or what day he would surprise me with that from the end of May to the end of December but glory to God I endured and the prize is great on the other side of the endurance and I did it by the grace of God who made me remember the promise the joy that was set before me. Let God paint the joy that's set before you so you don't quit in your difficult, in your hard times. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, and be encouraged. This really encouraged me. You know, even if you don't finish your race, you need to be mindful God deals multi-generational. Maybe your part is just to pass the baton and somebody else will finish the race. And you get to celebrate from the great cloud of witness your children going on and finishing the race, your children's children going on and finish the race. 
There was a lot of people in, the, in Hebrews where you read about the people of faith. Many of them never received the promise of Jesus Christ coming in their time. But what they did is, is the result of why we have received it. Don't be selfish. Run the race. Your children are waiting on your victory. Your grandchildren are waiting on your victory. Your co-worker is waiting on your victory. The person in the marketplace is waiting on you to continue to endure. Amen. Even if you don't cross the finish line, you set it up for somebody else to cross the finish line. Amen. So keep your eyes on Jesus. It's the only way you will endure. Back to Hebrews chapter 12. Let's look at verse 2 again. It says, we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. You know what? It's not even on us. He is the one that champions us on, and he initiates and perfects our faith. Jesus comes alongside us when we keep our eyes on him as we run this race to initiate and perfect our faith. You know, in Romans 8, 26, it says in the message, meanwhile, the moment we get tired in the waiting, God's spirit is right alongside us, helping us along. The Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. When we begin to pray in other tongues, we allow God to pray through us when we don't know what to pray in our time of, of, of weakness, our time of wanting to quit, when we don't have the right words, when we there is the power of God who is girding us up with endurance, praying out the will of God so that all things work together for our good. Glory to God. And then God is championing us along. He is cheering us along. He is giving us supernatural strength. You know like when you're in a game and you can be praying your best, but when your boys are there or your family's there, you hear them cheering you on, man, you go to another super level, supernatural level of strength. Something on the inside begins to stir up and you play better. Well, I want you to know Jesus stepped on the inside of you to champion you on so that you play better so that you be strengthened look in my time of having to endure all those months Jesus initiated my faith in the accident when it happened he initiated by having me say the devourer is rebuked for my sake he gave me my faith word of confession to stand on and he kept reminding me of it all through those seven or eight months of going through he kept putting an image of me standing before the congregation with Goliath's head cut off my victory me walking and testifying that the enemy is defeated. Goliath represents the devil. Glory to God. And over and over I would hear him whisper in my heart the devourer is rebuked for my sake. What was that? Jesus initiating and perfecting my faith. He wants to do that for each and one of you. He's saying come on D. Come on, Britt. Come on, Micah. Come on. I'm on the inside of you. Don't quit. Come on and rise up. Come on and pray in the Holy Ghost. Let me gird you up with strength. I'm cheering you on. I'm upholding you. I'm strengthening you. Don't quit. He's saying that to all of us. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Jesus is championing you on when you keep your eyes on him, when you remember what he did at Calvary. When you remember all the hostility that he had to endure. So let him jumpstart your faith. Even when you don't have any faith. Yeah. Just look to him. Begin to pray in the spirit. He'll jumpstart your faith. He has enough faith to get you through. It's his faith. Just let him gird it up. Amen. Your reliance is on Jesus, not in your own ability. Amen. He is the initiator and the perfecter of your faith. So don't let anything rob you from your focus on Jesus. There are many things out here in the world trying to take your attention away from Jesus. He's the one that died for you. He's the one that rescued you. He's the one that gave his life for you. No one else did. You are the focus of his love. So remember that when you feel like you cannot. You got a loving Savior that wants to, that has forgiven you that shed his blood for you, that walks with you, that upholds you, that comforts you if you will allow him, that strengthens us in our pain and struggle and gets us to the place of victory. 
So instead of looking at the things that are difficult and hard, look to Jesus. Pray in the Spirit. Look at what he says in his word. Listen to what he speaks to your heart. Spend time with him and praise and worship for who he is and remind yourself who you are, who is with you, and who is in you, and who is for you. Remind yourself of that hostility he endured. Remind yourself because of the joy set before him, knowing we would be his, he endured the cross. And that same endurance power stepped on the inside of us to cause us to endure any hardship. So don't lose sight of the importance of endurance. At this time, I want to show you the importance of endurance, and I have a video I want to show you. And it's going to be a video about Derek Redman, and he was in a 1992 Olympics. He is, he is from Britain, and he represented British in this race, and he was expected to win. He was an outstanding runner, and I want you to see what endurance looks like so that you won't throw in the towel. Amen. Your daddy won't let you down. 
You remember that, that, that poem, Footprints. You remember the man looked at the sand and he said the sand re represented his life story. But he noticed that at some point in the sand, he only saw one set of footprints. And he asked Jesus, he said, you said what I would, what I gave my life to you. And I said, I would follow you. You said you would never leave me nor forsake me. But how come in the most difficult and the most trying times of my life, there was only one set of footprints. And he said, my son it was in those hard and difficult trying times is when I carried you God is carrying you glory to God he will not fail you he will not relax his hold on you uh, surely not keep your eyes on Jesus keep your eyes on Jesus glory to God keep your eyes on Jesus regardless of what situation you're in it cannot end like this. It cannot end like this. Mary, she had to endure her son being beaten, marred, mutilated, punished, hung up on the cross, being spat at, being rejected and cursed at. Mother, mothers in here, you know the pain of being a mother. It's seeing your child being tortured, mutilated, and rejected, and you can't do anything to help. She had to endure it. But her enduring, knowing this was the will of God, produced the greatest joy that mankind could have ever experienced. Our risen Savior, our Jesus. There may be a situation that you're in that God is saying let this dream die or it looks like something that was marvelous is turning out horrible but I want you to know it can't end like that what you endure if you will finish with Jesus will turn out to be the greatest joy you have ever experienced keep your eyes on Jesus it cannot end like this and you're here today you might be in a situation where you're saying, God, it can't end like this. What in the world is going on? I want you to know, God does not intend for your story to end in failure. You might be online and you're saying the same thing. Man, it can't end like this. God does not intend for your story to end in failure. God is not through with you. If the devil could have killed you, you'd be dead. But he didn't. So the fact that you're still alive, there's still hope to know that it cannot end like this. And if that's you, I want to say a prayer over you. I want to release God's endurance in your life and if that's you that's feeling that way like I just can't endure I'm in this situation and I feel hopeless and helpless then come to the altar let me agree with you and release strength because strength is here God always comes to confirm his word with signs, wonders and miracles and whatever you minister on is what the anointing is in the house and there's an anointing of endurance in this house and if that's you, come to the altar so that I can pray. Glory to God. Thank you for being bold enough to step forward. And if you're in your seat, you're going to release agreement for those that come to the altar. And what God will do when I pray over you, God's going to put a scripture in your heart. He's going to bring a word back to your memory. You know what that word is? That's your word that God is initiating and perfecting your faith. That's your stand on word. With me, with my accident, God gave me the devourer's rebuke for my sake. With Elder Williams and their son, God gave me a word of knowledge that he shall live and not die. That God is perfecting everything that concerns him. Praise God. And total restoration and total restitution. And her sons truly live and did not die. But that was God perfecting and initiating.
associating my faith with her faith. So when I pray for you, when a word of God rises up in your heart, hold on to that word. Don't let go of that word. When you, if you see an image in your imagination of your victory or something he's showing you, that's your image of your deliverance. Don't let it go. That's God perfecting and initiating your faith, championing you on. That's how I got through with a vision of my testimony, of me standing in high heels, telling my story, defeating the devil in his story. So, Father, I lift up all of those that have come to this altar, and I thank you for a manifestation of your anointing of endurance. I thank you for the comforter and the strengthener that's here right now, that you strengthen each one of them in their inner man that with strength, that you infuse them with inner strength in the name of Jesus, that the joy of the Lord begin to rise up on the inside of them. God, speak the word of your faith in their heart. Let them know what the word they're to stand on. Cause them to see vision of their victory. Cause them to see and dream them of the vision of them coming out in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. And if you're online or you're in the house, I want to offer you Jesus if you've never received the great sacrifice he made for us. You see, there are many gods. There's Buddha, there's Mahama, there's Reverend Moon, there's the dollar, the almighty dollar that's a god. But there's only one Jesus. He's the only one that wants to come live on the inside of us and bring heaven into our body, into and house himself on the inside of us. He's the only one that died for us when he didn't deserve to die, that took our sins and our sickness and disease and all our pain, trouble, and grief into his body so that we can be free. There was a great exchange that happened on that cross. He gave us his righteousness for our unrighteousness, our sin. He gave us his healing for our sickness and disease. He gave us his prosperity for our poorness. And I can go on and on. And if you haven't received Jesus in your heart, I couldn't think of a better thing to do on Resurrection Sunday. What are you waiting for? So this is what I want to do. I don't care if you're online or here in person. We're going to repeat this prayer because today is your day of salvation. When you hear the voice of God give you an invitation, do not wait because tomorrow is not promised. And as a family, join in and say this prayer with them. Lord Jesus, thank you for giving your life for me. Jesus, thank you for rising from the dead. For me, this day, I repent of my sin. I give you my life. Come into my heart. I receive you right now as my Lord and my Savior. Glory to God. If you just said that prayer, you have been snatched out of the dominion and power and control of the devil and put into the family of God. Welcome to God's family. And because you made that great decision, we want to connect with you so that we can help you walk this out. Amen. We were not created to do life alone. We need to come together. We have a community to strengthen one another. So connect with our ministry, whether you're here in person or you're online. If you made the great decision to receive Jesus, text hashtag BCMIDC to 22300. Come on, text that number. I don't care if you're in the building or online. When you text that, a link will pop up on your phone. That's our Victory Connect number. Hit that link and follow the rest of the promptings, and someone will be in contact with you to pray with you, to help you walk this out and put materials in your hands if you'd like to show and explain to you what actually happened today. <laughs>